bought from the House of Worth in Paris, but those were clothes they bought be right before they became First Lady. So we don't really have a record, per se, of them buying, you know, uh, overseas clothing. Really, the, the first real record of that on the record that we have is Jackie Kennedy, 1961, when she goes, makes the first uh, state trip with President Kennedy in May to Paris, and she has uh, 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 Givenchy design the gown that she wore to the palace at Versailles for the performance hosted by President de Gaulle. So for our last question, Carl, you mentioned you mentioned the book, which I might note is um, is going to be available in the East Room for uh, for sale, and Carl is going to be able to sign it if you want to pick one up. There's a discount too of 10% for however many you buy. Um, but I know you, you you went into pretty deep detail on all of the first ladies uh, in that book. One in particular, Pat Nixon. Can you tell me, um, you know, in your exploration of of the subject, what fascinated you the, the most on First Lady Pat Nixon? Well, you know, I'll, this is something I'll 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 just mention in a general way right now because I'm I'm really going to get into great depth in it in the last lecture. I'm just going to focus on her and Mrs. Ford. Um, but, you know, I've written about Mrs. Nixon before, and by the way, it's kind of funny being up here right now because uh, the one and only time uh, that I saw Mrs. Nixon and we made contact with each other, although it was not a, a, an opportunity to talk, was the night before the dedication of the Nixon Library in 1990. And I had at that point um, written my two books on First Ladies and um, worked through Julie Eisenhower, who helped me, who was a friend, and uh, she would uh, ask her mother questions that I would send. And, um, and, and Helen Smith, who had been Mrs. Nixon's press secretary, so they knew I was going to be here. Julie invited me to the opening. Mrs. Nixon knew I was going to be here. She was in frail health. But Helen Smith had told her, uh, Carl was here in the audience, and, and he'd be he'll be sitting next to me. And so when they first came out, she saw me, and we both we acknowledged each other. So it's, it, it, it's really kind of interesting to be here because this is right where she was. Um, there is something that I think that film that we saw. Uh, you can't watch that film and not be really moved practically every second. Because that story is something else, man. I mean, that is a story of, you know, somebody deciding that they are not going to fail in life. They are going to succeed in life through education. And that nothing is going to get in the way of it. And it's so, I just, uh, it's just, there, there's, there's so many layers to her story. What is fast, the most fascinating thing, though, about her is... Here you come, Nixon's come in in uh, January 1969. The women's movement is ostensibly begun, at least in the public mind, in October, a month before Nixon's elected. The Miss America contest, when you have all the, 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 the women protesters and, you know, burning their bras uh, and all this sort of stage uh, uh, stuff that's done to, to, you know, draw press attention. And, you know, the miniskirt, women are wearing miniskirts at the time. And, and so I began to do research for this book and really look into this and, and with Mrs. Nixon. And you see that Mrs. Nixon liked the miniskirt. And the reason she did was because she, and, uh, she was once with her two daughters while they were buying clothing during the campaign um, uh, with its designer by the name of uh, Vincent Mignon. And... Uh, uh, Julie and her mom wore the same size, and Julie said her mom liked a dress on her, and she said, why don't you try it on, and she did, and, you know, so I'll get more into that, but what is really fascinating is, is the, we call that chapter uh, the California girl in pants, because you really see how early on, long before she even thought she'd be a public figure, she liked wearing pants. When she worked at Bullock's Wilshire, she was at that point a junior at USC. 
And um, uh, in a letter she wrote to her aunt back in New York, she, she was telling about the job, but she said, you know, I wear pants and everybody complains because they want to see my legs, but I really don't care. I like wearing pants. And, you know, uh, we're talking in the 1930s, you know, me, Catherine Hepburn uh, was a public figure. Right? But even before that, even as a young girl, one of the photographs that's shown, and it's a picture we use in the book, uh, when she's not probably more than 14, 15 years old with two of her girlfriends, um, one of those days, very rare days that she had to enjoy life. You know, sometimes they take the streetcar uh, and they make their way out to the beach for a day. But this is on a water tower, and you know, this whole area was rural, the citrus farms, and you know, her family had a farm, and so. The, you know, you see these three girls who have climbed this water tower and somebody else has got a brownie and is, is, is taking pictures of them. And it's not a day when she's working. She's not in a pair of, of, you know, dirty overalls from working on the farm, but she's wearing a pair of pants. So, you know, and then, of course, I will go into that whole story uh, at the, in the last lecture about how she becomes the first first lady to publicly wear pants. And um, she does it very definitively. And, and there are four occasions when she does it. So it's, you, know, you can't say it's, it's just a coincidence. Um, and of course, at the time, uh, it's still a bit controversial. Even her husband, the president, dis, uh, you know, tries to uh, discourage women who work at the White House from wearing these. And, and she's not wearing them at the White House, but she wore one in a campaign poster for re-election, 72. So it's that really, to me, um, is, is a fascinating look at her. And of course, the book really does go into great depth on Mrs. Nixon in that way. So anyway. Carl, thank you.